this is the Cult Connections Podcast, and I'm your host, Ian Graham. Join me and a new guest every episode as we cover a wide variety of film and TV. Every genre, old, new, but never boring. So sit back, relax, and enjoy Cult Connections. Hello everybody, welcome back to Cult Connections with me, Ian Graham. Um, War on Film is finished, however, Nathan is back for a brand new um, regular series, or as as regular as we can make it, Um, and we are going on adventures in time and Spain, uh, sorry, space. We Uh, could do it in Spain if you want. (laughs) <laughs> well, actually, there are there are a couple of the Doctor Who stories that were filmed in in um, their Spain, there, Nathan. Ah, um, well, there we go. He uh, saves it, everyone. He saves it. <laughs> <laughs> However, Time in Spain is well known. It's a well known um, uh, the Billy Fluff, which is a William Hartnell Fluff line. Um, from from back in the the day, he was well known for getting his lines wrong. Hey, okay, well there you uh, go. That's the we've just named this series. We have <laughs> time in Spain, adventures in time, <laughs> time and in Spain. Spain. So, um, but for you, Nathan, obviously, you know Doctor Who. What's your who's who's your Doctor? Would you say who's who is that? I think my Doctor is David Tennant. I'm gonna. Probably make Ian very angry. <laughs> because, no, uh, not at I think all. it probably is David Tennant. Um, but my appreciation for Doctor Who is fairly recent. I did not watch it. I, I remember when it came back and I watched the... Because my dad's a huge Doctor Who fan, so I watched the Christopher Eccleston season when he came back. I started the David Tennant stuff and then I fell away before he, he actually left. So I didn't watch any of Matt Smith, Capaldi... Or I can't remember the lady's name. Jodie Jody Whittaker. Jodie Whittaker. Jody, don't know where Jodie Baker was in my head. Don't even know who that is. <laughs> okay. Maybe I'm getting Tom Baker and Jodie Whittaker confused. Um, so yeah, but then recently my wife and I have been binging Doctor Who, and actually we've rewatched all the David Tennant stuff. We've nearly finished with Matt Smith. Um, I'm excited to see what Peter Capaldi did, although people tell me to sort of temper my expectations, but I love the thick of it so much. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I thought the thick of it was such a good show. Yeah. Anything Peter Capaldi does, I will probably gravitate towards. Um, I'll probably be, I can't remember what the show's called, but he's in an Apple TV show at the minute, um, which I'll probably watch incredibly legally at some point. <laughs> <laughs> um, because Peter Capaldi is excellent. Um uh, so yeah, so the older episodes I've watched a few. Yeah, sort of as like it's probably how this series kind of organically came out of nowhere. Because I said I was watching a few older episodes, kind of random Dalek stories, because um, the Daleks are pretty great. They um, are. And then yeah, but then we saw sort of, when the Toy Maker came back at Christmas, mm-hmm. um, portrayed by the ever amazing Neil Patrick Harris. Um, You'd obviously then put, I'd read a load of articles about the first toy maker stuff, mm-hmm. and then you obviously said to to watch what you can of the original yeah, toy maker which, stuff, which is why we are sat here. It is indeed, yeah. So, so like you say, so fresh from his appearance in um, the the giggle. Mm. Uh, so, I say, so before before people shout at me, I've just realised it wasn't the Christmas special. So I'm sorry, everyone that I upset. I realise now. I called it <laughs> well, the Christmas special. <laughs> well, it was in uh, the sort of December, and it was pretty special. So I think yeah, you know, there we well, go. Yeah, let's go with that one. That's before anyone's just gone at cult connections, it wasn't the Christmas special. You noob. Like, <laughs> there. Uh, oh dear. Yep. So we are going to talk about um, the first Doctor adventure, uh, or what's left of it, unfortunately. So, mm-hmm. so the Celestial Toy Maker. Um, and to be fair, Nathan, we are at a disadvantage with uh, this one because only one episode exists. It was a, a four episode <laughs> story. And only the final one still exists in the archives. Do you think, I was trying to decide before we recorded, um, 
whether having only the final episode is better than having only the first episode. Ooh, that's an interesting one. I think the middle ones would be rubbish completely because it would just give you nothing. (laughs) I suppose what we do have with this is a, a, a conclusion. Hmm. Um, it would be nice to have the first episode though, just to kind of set the tone, maybe. Um, I think so because it's kind of a conclusion with no context. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It is. Um, however, I think maybe the the giggle gives us a bit of con- yeah. text in a way. I think that might might help a little bit. Um, for myself, Nathan, now I've read the, the Target, um, their novelisation, but it was quite a long time ago, so I can't recall too much of it. Mm. Um, I was going to borrow my mate, um, their, their Alan's, um, the audio, um, the sort of reconstruction of it, um, except uh, it's at his mum's, so... Uh, it wasn't at hand. I would have done that. So um, for all of the missing their stories, they, the BBC do have the audio for them um, and they have um, uh, they sort of released them all with um, uh, their, sort of na- their, their narration as well, which kind of links them oh, all up. Lovely. So, yeah. So, um, however, I have not listened to the the, the Celestial the Toymaker. Um, but but just to start there, Nathan, and one thing, and one thing that Russell T. Uh, the Davy said about about this, about the the character. So, so obviously, this story is the celestial the toy toy maker, and uh, he's dropped the uh, the celestial part because it can have some un um, the savory uh, like this sort of connotations apparently. But I was not aware of that. I wasn't until this exact, again, until doing a bit of research for obviously this show. Because mm-hmm. um, originally I just thought they must have dropped it. At first I thought it was kind of like he is a celestial and he happens to be call himself the toy maker. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah. I thought it was kind of like that sort of thing because I think celestials, I believe there's something to do with Marvel or DC, the celestials. Okay, I don't know. I'm, I'm giving people so many reasons to shout at me today. <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. No. That, that's I all right, Nathan. No I one didn't actually listen, so I don't think <laughs> I didn't it really it. matters. <laughs> so I didn't put two and two together, but yeah, I found the same thing. Apparently, celestial is a bit of a slur towards. Uh-huh. I believe it's the Chinese community. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Chinese. Yeah, so, so they dropped it. But uh-huh. I, I do also think that take, uh, ignoring all of that, dropping the celestial bit is probably just smarter anyway because it, it does become a bit of a mouthful it is a bit of a mouthful yeah and uh and like you know they do just say refer to me even in this say, story just as a, a, a they're the toy maker but um mm-hmm. um interesting you should say that though so it's obviously their celestial though has lots of um uh, uh, their sort of meanings or it can you, you know you can um uh, they, they they sort of apply it there to lots of things, and the celestial obviously as in as in space and the uh, the sort of universe, and uh, they're the toy maker as a uh, their character as well about him um, being you know a a sort of all all powerful uh, their sort of presence, um, mm-hmm. you know another worldly their sort of presence. Yeah, yeah, he could sort of obviously manipulate everything around him and create a world, which he decides to do in sort of like a very, almost like a game show host. <laughs> like if, yeah, I, don't, I can't even think of a game show host now, but that's sort of why, he, what he then becomes. Is he, is he, is he Bruce? Like, um, like their Forsyth? Is he, is he Noel Edmonds? Is it? Do you know who? Oh ooh. gosh, I mean, who's yours? I don't think he's Noel Edmonds. No, um, but I guess in the yeah, and 
I missed <laughs> Noel Edmonds kind of like childhood TV show. You're, you're too and young, Nathan. That's it's like an, he's quite. He'd be very aggressive. He was an aggressive TV show, like show host. Ooh. With someone who he thinks he's in a, you know, he's like he's kind of like if he's a flamboyant Jeremy Clarkson, but like a who wants to be a millionaire Jeremy Clarkson? Ah, uh, okay, yeah, All yeah. Right. He's a yeah. flamboyant who wants who wants to be a millionaire Jeremy Clarkson. That's the yeah, yeah. That's the tagline for the for Justin. the show, Nathan. There you go. Just as racist as well. <laughs> well, this is a t- I wouldn't have picked up on on there this because um, he does have a a sort of Chinese sort of costume. He does have a mm. have a traditional uh, like this or Chinese costume, but. You know, Michael Goff, who plays uh, uh, the, the toy maker himself, does not, you know, he doesn't put on a, a this sort of accent. They haven't given him, you know, sort of, you know, makeup or anything to maybe change how he how he looks. So it's no. just so it's just the the costume, uh, which is its saving grace there, Nathan, because um, in your troll through. The classic, the Doctor Who episodes. If you get to uh, a Tom, um, the Baker story called the Talons of Wing Chian, um, that uh, that does have a a a English white actor playing a a Chinese person, and it's uh, it's mm. very very dodgy indeed. Yeah, that sounds. About right for TV of the time, mm-hmm. I think, because it's it is obviously um, society has moved on from things like that. But um, it's that was one of the things that came out from the Neil Patrick Harris kind of episode was people looking back to the original toy maker and obviously pointing out all of these things. Mm-hmm. Whereas at the time, society probably didn't really bat an eyelid. Yeah, like, which is just nope. shows that we've all moved on. Like, yeah, yeah, it does, so. and for the better, for the better. Yeah, I think it's surprising that um, and if we'll probably get into proper comparisons later in the episode, but between the Michael Goff portrayal of toy maker and then the Neil Patrick Harris version of the toy maker, obviously we are talking about two a- actors at very <laughs> opposite ends of the spectrum mm. <laughs> when it turns to kind of like the sort of portrayals they tend to they tend to do of characters but like the toy makers obviously it seems like they're quite separate from each other uh-huh. and like the character entirely like you probably wouldn't know they were the same character that's in- yeah it's interesting you should say that nathan and and i suppose looking at at sort of doctor who as a whole and looking at the looking at at the the program and how it's how it's sort of changed so much but um so if we think of William Hartnell in this story although we don't see him that much unfortunately he's not in it uh, there for too long but William Hartnell compared to you know you know David uh, their sort of tenant you know very different in in their their versions of the uh, their sort of doctor Mm-hmm. Um and maybe no no reason as to why um the Neil Neil Patrick Harris wouldn't be wouldn't be very different as well in in the, his portrayal. Oh no, um, I think it I think it yeah. shows a the growth of the show uh-huh. because it's no longer and it's no longer just they make a set, everyone acts in that set. They take mm-hmm. down that set. They have to build another set. <laughs> like <laughs> they can now move around places or not have any sets at times. They just have big um, green curtains up. Um, but yeah, you're right. It's kind of the freedom in in the role. And I don't know. Like I think for the time, William Hartnell's portrayal as a doctor works. He's a mm-hmm. he's a very good doctor, and you can you can see the mannerisms that other actors have then taken up from the doctor, like the superiority mm-hmm. complex, the narcissism, but the protectiveness over his companions. Yeah, and in one episode we get over the TARDIS, like as well, and that sort of shines through in the character. And I do think Neil Patrick Harris still took Michael Goff's version of the character took out the key parts um, and then just built it around Neil Patrick Harris to showman. 
Yeah, 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 definitely. Now, interestingly enough, and it's not it's not mentioned. It's not um, it's not you know canon as it were, which is a which which is a tricky thing within uh, um, uh, the, the Doctor Who. But um, apparently, at the time, the, uh, the the producers were um, thinking. That that the toy maker character could be another one of of the the doctors, uh, their sort of race. So, um, you know that was was kind of mentioned. Um, at this point, actually, actually, all these things, all all these these sort of rules of the show that we think of now, they they weren't there. They hadn't been thought no. up. So, um, there was. Um, you know, there was no. Well, I mean, there was other, other, other sort of time lords, but it wasn't set in stone. Obviously, re- regeneration wasn't a thing. Mm. You know, there was only one, one uh, uh, their doctor. We didn't know about anything like that. So, so, so the the toy maker himself could have uh, regenerated. That could be something that he's that he's done. If he is a time lord, of course, he might he might not be. Yeah, and he obviously described a toy maker. Um, he said, "He said this. He told um, if I read this line, this is from Tardis fandom, who have sort of put a load of quotes together about the toy maker." And it says, um, "He told Stephen Taylor and um, Dodo Chaplet that that this toy maker was in, and this is in quotes, immortal, like all toy makers." Mm-hmm. So, in sort of the beginning, it alludes uh-huh. that they thought he thought the toy maker was some sort of race. Maybe not toy makers specifically, but yeah. and as you said, as you just pointed out as well, the the sort of the original inclinations was that the toy maker was a time lord, mm-hmm. yeah, or at least yeah. from the same genetic pool as time lords. That's a good, so, yeah. That's I guess a do, good point. Do we know yeah. what the toy maker even is? Um, no, no, well, I, guess. I don't think we do. I don't think we need to really either. No. I think, uh, oh no, no. it no. would ruin it. it would ruin no. it because then you get all these theories because it's it's really cool that. To talk about a character who's so iconic, yeah, but his appearances are so sparing. Yeah, like it's, he's not part of the Doctor's Rogue Gallery. He's sort of like a final boss that turns up every, <laughs> apparently every sixty years, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> outside of comics and books. <laughs> well, and it's it is they said in 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 this day story that him and the, the Doctor have met uh, this all mm-hmm. before, so this isn't their first meeting. Um, which I think is a nice, uh, they sort of touch kind of there alludes to s- stories prior to to what we know of uh, of there the Doctor. He would have they returned as well. So um, when when their Colin Baker was uh, uh, there the Doctor, um, there was a story which was which was fairly well well advanced, I believe, sort of script wise, called uh, the the Nightmare Fair. Um, and that was all set to be, I think, I think for Colin's second um, their season, and then um, Michael um, the Grade, who was the uh, director general of uh, uh, the the BBC, they decided that that the show needed to go on hiatus, um, so we didn't get uh, the the story, uh, and and the Michael Goff was was going to come uh, uh, come there back and play. Uh, they're the toy maker again. Oh, right, it's a shame that that, that obviously yeah. happened when there was a, definitely when there was a script on the table and everything. It yeah. seems uh-huh. um, it seems silly that you need to put a show like Doctor Who on ice. But I mean, when they did eventually put it on ice in the nineties, when by the time they brought it back, it was it turned into what it is now, which is just yeah, a huge yeah, phenomenon. Yeah, so yeah. maybe like cooler heads prevailed. Well, I mean, they didn't. I mean, I mean, I mean, Doctor Who did come back, so I think it went mm-hmm. off air for about eighteen months at that point. You know, Colin Bacon did come back, um, but the stories that they had planned out, they they didn't go back to them. So um, they they did all all of their new ones, uh, not very good ones either. On the whole, <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately for their Colin, because he's uh, he's a he's a super actor, but he was uh, he wasn't. He wasn't best served by the show. Um, 
So, however, this one then, Nathan, so written by um, Brian Hales and uh, Donald Tosh and directed by Bill Sellers, uh, with, as we've mentioned, William Hartnell as the, the Doctor, the Peter Purvis as Stephen and Jackie Lane as Dodo. Um, so the TARDIS crew in this one, then, Nathan, what were your thoughts about about them? What did you think of this uh, setup? Interesting, an interesting dynamic, obviously, it, it draws obvious comparisons with what I said at the start, which is that I've been watching obviously most recently the Matt Smith run, uh-huh. and I've just f- finished the arc of Amy and Rory, which is who uh-huh. I made a comparison to. So okay. it was obviously quite like it. It was quite like the dynamic was there <laughs> to, to begin with. I don't know anything about these characters, but whenever you would pick up Doctor Who, if you picked up nine out of ten episodes it would be the doctor and one companion and that's Mm. kind of what you look at and then i pick up two different ends of the very doctor who kind of like timeline in Mm -hmm. terms of a tv show and it's doctor and a couple now i don't know if they're actually a couple (laughs) but that's kind of what it is so i thought the type i picked up obvious what the dynamic in the characters are um without knowing too much about them in general Uh um and um yeah and it's funny to watch old doctor who and sort of see everything that they've kept even into kind of like the most recent episode that we've got Uh it's the theme it's the police box it's the doctor it's his companions (laughs) he's on a strange place he's fighting someone in the most bizarre way you can fight someone. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Which is, so they've kept kind of like all the tropes there and the character. Yeah. 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 And the way the companions kind of act. Mm-hmm. And even when the doctor um, got away from the game with the, with the toy master, mm-hmm. it was the female companion that obviously had a deep attachment to the doctor that hugged him first, mm. which is exactly the dynamic of Amy Rory and the mm. Doctor, so there's there's things there. There's obviously uh-huh. differences because it's a sixty year old episode compared to yeah. a ten year old episode. But there you it's go. interesting what, what what you should say about about the number of uh, like their sort of companions, Nathan, because throughout the sixties there was always more than one. So the Doctor always oh. had a pretty big like this sort of crew. So so in Will William Hartnell's first. First two seasons, there was the th- there was three, so there was um, there was his uh, their granddaughter Susan and Ian and um, their Barbara. Interesting. Um, and then Ian and Barbara left, and then s- no, so Susan left first of all, and then Vicky came in, and um, Ian and Barbara left, and Stephen came on. On their board, and then the Vicky came in, and then Dodo, they they came on board, which is where we are at the moment. So for the toy maker, that's the crew that we have. But uh, moving forward, so for the rest of Hartnells and for Triton's years, there was always uh, there was always at least uh, two, sometimes um, their three companions. So it's uh, it makes sense yeah. when you when you say that because the big thing between obviously it's usually between regenerations because something will happen to the companions and then uh-huh. there's a gap before they get to the new one but they always make such a big deal about the doctor obviously being alone and how he should yeah. ever be alone so it makes more sense when you say that he's used to actually having an entourage more yeah. than just a, yeah. a one person you don't really see him so from so from the 60s and and sort of 70s you never you never really see him on his own too much. The the seventies did bring in the the single egg, their sort of companion. That's much more of a seventies thing. Um, mm. But we'll find out about that yeah. Nathan, as we as we go on. So <laughs> so um, and the the so so the story story itself. So say so the the doctor is in. Mm-hmm. Um, they're the toy makers. They sort of office, as it were, or, well, yeah. or whatever he's got. He's in his his uh, his uh, their lair. Um, fortunately, because William Hart Hartnell had had their two weeks holiday for this story, 
uh, the Doctor was made invisible. He was also made um, the mute as well, so so they d- didn't actually have to do too much. There's the shots of his hands. Uh, it's not That's Hartnell's quite. hands; it's someone else's hands. So. That's quite um, the agent William Hartnell had to get to your big well, the Well, well, funnily enough, well, well, they're funnily enough, and you should say this, Nathan. Now, now, the series was on like forty-eight weeks of of the the year or something like that. So all of the regular cast would have episodes where they were either they were knocked out or they were in uh, uh, their sort of prison or. You know, something happened like this. There would be some there reason why you wouldn't see them, um, why you wouldn't see mm-hmm. one of them for for the odd uh, uh, this sort of episode. It's because they were off, you know, like because they had a sense. week off, so, <laughs> so, so so they had to hide that, um, which I do things quite sort of funny, but um, it's very funny, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we no, don't, it, see, yeah. I was gonna say, I think it, the setup is really. I say set up because we join it three quarters of the way through. But um, the round that they actually built and the story and the world that they built, I thought was really good. Mm-hmm. And you can see, to compare it to obviously the more recent episode again, you can see the, what the toy maker is all about. And then everything that you watched kind of at the Christmas just gone makes sense when you compare it to the old character. And I think they did a really good job of making this, like making the sets, making it seem foreboding. I think it's again, much like with the last episode of war on film, um, the black and white, I think really helps. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like, and, and helps kind of show the darkness of this place. Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah. Yeah. I think you've, I think you made a good point. And it is, it is really fascinating watching the, the, the black and white episode. Episodes in it and about and about how they do work and uh, yeah they they do lend itself to a like their sort of creepiness as well. Um, one one thing I did like and obviously in the uh, uh, their sort of giggle like the final act is a it's a game of um, like their sort of catch basically a fairly simple sort of game you know that mm-hmm. they play and in this one it's a fairly simple. Um, like this sort of snakes and ladders type type the game that that uh, Stephen and uh, uh, this sort of Dodo have to play. I have um, no idea what the rules of that was. <laughs> and I think we obviously well, weren't think... meant to because of um, is it Cyril? Cyril, was... yeah, yeah, the uh-huh. big schoolboy. Yeah, um, it made sense. But I was watching them play, and I was like, I have no idea. What they're doing. <laughs> 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 they're just random numbers that would move, and then I know obviously Cyril was cheating, and because of yeah. Cheating. But, but I think what was good with it in a fairly simple game, a game you would play yourself, you know, you would play when you were you were quite quite sort of small. Um but mm. with I added the danger and it was it was funny because at the start of the game and Cyril did say, you know, don't step on to the floor because it is uh, they're electrified. Yeah. Uh, and they're playing the the, the game. Who who a Cyril does does fall off, so he falls off one of the uh, their sort of squares or whatever they are onto the mm. floor, and it's pretty gruesome. I thought how 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 he looks. I thought, oh, that's quite nasty. Yeah, for for the BBC at six o'clock in the <laughs> yeah. afternoon, <laughs> it's pretty. It's funny what they used to expose people for. But yeah. yeah, and that's the bit where at the end Stephen then looks at the the square and he's like, this one's wet or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So yeah, it was a sad end for poor Cyril, but yeah. and possibly deserved. Well, who knows? He might. I don't even know if Cyril was real or if he was just like a figment of the world. Of Do we what, know who of what the, Cyril was? Of the toy makers. Well, well, well. It's interesting because and and and, and if we look at it, so the Peter Stevens plays um like the sort of Cyril now. In the previous episodes, he played. He played the different uh, their characters, so I think he plays um the the Jack of uh, their knaves, and there's there's some there's some uh, they sort of clown mm. type type their characters. It's a pretty small their cast. I think there was um there was uh, the regulars. There was uh, Michael Goff. There was Peter Stevens. Uh, there was um uh, their Carmen Silvera, who. Uh, I, I, you'll be too young for this, but she's best famous for um, um, their playing 
um, Rennie's wife in um, a low, low. Uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the long running sitcom. Uh, uh, she's in. Yeah. Uh, uh, she's in episodes one, two, and three. Um, but yes, it's a smaller cast, but they play more than one sort of role, like they are. Um, uh, you know, conjured up by by the toy maker, maybe you know, yeah. the, you know, it's part. I think of that, makes, I think that makes sense. I think yeah. that's that's the obvious things that we said about losing the context because you've only got a quarter of the story. But yeah, uh, I just yeah. didn't really know because we saw obviously that he had a really gruesome end, and then you're like, well, I don't even know if this guy's real. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's just yeah. He's sad probably not real. He's probably, he's, he's probably not. Um, However, for what it is, for twenty five minutes, I think it's it's fine. It's quite it's quite fun. I think it's uh, it packed you know, a lot in. They got a lot done. They achieved their goal. Um, we got to see all the Doctor, the Doctor Who things. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. Which is what what you're there for. That's what you're yeah. all there to yeah, watch. Definitely, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fought the toy maker uh-huh. in a. Um, in a really bizarre way, <laughs> he just mimicked his voice in the end. So, yeah. um, but that's yeah. exactly the sort of thing the doctor would have done. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, I mean, the only thing you're missing is a sonic screwdriver, really. But that's pre sonic sonic I, screwdriver. I guess so, as such. <laughs> so no, no sonic screwdriver as of yet, then Nathan. Um, yeah, but and and yeah, and you got to hear the same Tardis sound that we've always heard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So no, yeah. I think it's a it's a satisfying en- ending. I do wish we had the rest of the story. Yeah. Um, and I think you could see why the toy maker, um, as a character, I'm going to talk about in uh-huh. the Doctor Who world, why he's so feared, and I think mm-hmm. that's why yeah. the ending to the Neil Patrick Harris the episode, the giggle, mm-hmm. is so fascinating. Yeah. 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 And and. And at the end of this one, you know, the doctor says, you know, mm-hmm. he's still there. He can, he can, he can come there back. And I don't think this is the last I'll, I'll let see of him. So, uh, yeah, so yeah, I hope. Yeah, I do hope we get to see the toy maker again. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think bringing having Neil Patrick Harris. Hopefully, he's not just there for a one-off because I think what he okay. achieved in that episode is quite fascinating. And the yeah. setup with obviously he meant he name drops the master, but he also. I say name drop. He didn't name them, but talks about someone else. So yeah, uh-huh. yeah, yeah, that's yeah. going to be interesting. Yeah, but, yeah uh-huh. I really, I think Michael Goff version is is brilliant. Yeah, um, and it's, I think it's a shame we didn't get more. Yeah, yeah, that there's not still more. There is more toy <laughs> toy maker. There is some audios. So some of the big mm-hmm. finish audios. Uh, the the character does their come back. Um, their novels as well. I think I think he pops up in there a couple of their mm-hmm. uh, their sort of novels. There, the the um, the the Mrs. Adventures or the New Adventures, maybe. Um, yeah. um And and of course, later on this year, um, we will get an animated reconstruction of 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 the story. Um, and there is a trailer for it. What did you think of that, Nathan? I think it's good. I think it looks. Fascinating. Um, I think the art style looks very interesting. I know it's not to everyone's taste the first impressions of the animation, <laughs> but I think it looks it, it looks quirky. It looks different. It looks, um, and I think it's going to match the tone of what they're actually going for and what they're going, yeah, of what they mm-hmm. what they want to do. So yeah. we'll definitely, when that's released, we'll both be on that, and then we'll be here to give give our thoughts. <laughs> I think I think we'll have to now, don't we? Yeah, we yeah, do. I think we do. Yeah, uh huh. Um, I do, I do get some. There has been uh, this sort of criticism of the animation that we've seen so far, and as a as a as a more uh, as an older fan, then Nathan, as someone who's been mm-hmm. around a while, I kind of I get that a little bit, as in. Um, thankfully, some of the other missing stories are already animated, um, yes. but this animation style is very sort of different from from what's come mm. um, uh, there. So previously, so that's so 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 that's an interesting one. But the great thing about about the Doctor Who is that there's room for everything. Um, yeah, oh, and definitely. I, yeah, uh-huh, and I think definitely. that is absolutely fine. So, Dave. Um, 
I'd, I have one last question, and this uh-huh. might need to go out to, to the room or to everybody if you can't answer it. What game were the toy maker and the doctor playing? So apparently, so according to the Wikipedia, this is um, this is a, a variation on something called uh, oh gosh, it was the Tower of of something. Um, I so some pyramid, sort of, but it was taken in like a yeah, thousand so, years. <laughs> yeah, so like an interlocking sort of pyramid oh. type thing. It's a tower of 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 something or other. Uh, if you apparently. know what it is, let us know at Cold Connections. Um, <laughs> let, yeah. let us know what it is. Shame us at, at Cold Connections, please. Yeah, do. we don't know what a celestial yeah. is in the superhero world. We don't know. We don't. We we called the the giggle a Christmas special, and now we don't know what this board game is. Nah, we are hopeless. <laughs> Absolutely useless. <laughs> useless. Yeah. <laughs> Now, Nathan, what we did did speak about a little bit was, you know, could could the toy maker be a a, a time lord, as it were? Mm-hmm. And and you mentioned there to me previously about wanting to find out more about about the the time lords interested in um, their galley free and such like. Um, so, for our next adventure in in um, their time and Spain. <laughs> we will be travelling to the Gallifrey for for the for the fourth the Doctor adventure, the Deadly Assassin, yeah. which is uh, which is very exciting. Lots of their Time Lords, lots of um, their Gallifrey, lots of silly costumes as well um, for us to look at. Um, I'm looking forward to the costumes because the Time Lords in the brief sort of half an episode that we saw them in the David Tennant sort of last hurrah against the uh-huh. monster. What they were wearing was <laughs> really strange <laughs> when you compare it to the Doctor just hangs out in suits. <laughs> they wear pretty much the same outfits in this really? one. They They're like, yeah, um, they do. It, I don't know why, but it reminds me of Flash Gordon. Mm. It's very much of that. I can imagine Brian Blessed sat on the throne of Gallifrey. Oh gosh! Well, wouldn't that be something? That would be something. <laughs> that would be something indeed. No, I'm, so, I'm really looking forward to it. If anyone's and then if anyone's got any adventures that they that they want us to to look at during time in Spain, then then yeah, send them to Cult Connections, and we will. And um, we will ignore them and do that's what exactly we want what I was instead. About to say. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to feel included without being included, let us know. Let us know. <laughs> but anyway, Nathan, so that is the <laughs> Celestial the Toy Maker. We've, we've smashed it. Yeah. Um, no, I think it's good. Yep. I can it see is... why Michael Goff ended up playing Alfred. Oh, he's a great actor. He really is. Yeah. Oh, he's fantastic, fantastic. Yeah. His last role, really bizarrely, was just playing. Um, he was the voice of something in one of the Ice Ages, I think. That was like his last film, film role. Good for him. Yeah, random, yeah. random one for you. Yeah. Random little fact for everyone. Yeah. Well. <laughs> anyway, Nathan. On that note, thank you very much. No worries at all. Always a pleasure. Good and. Uh, and, and, of course, everybody, thanks for listening. We will see you soon for the Deadly Assassin. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs>